Welcome, everybody, to the NFL Presidential Address for Week 5. Another winning week for my clients. Yes, guy! Sunday wasn't so great. Went 2-4, and four, but I did have some really tough losses. We had the over in the Baltimore game as our big play, and that was an absolute right side call. It just didn't turn out. And we had the under as well in the New England Patriots-San Fran game. 24 points on turnovers. Right call didn't turn out. All my free picks won, and this video was great. So I'm seeing it really well and excited about the month of October. If you guys have never watched this show, I'm Lawrence Presman, co-founder of Wager Talk Media, owner of Sports Memo, Gold Sheet, and of course, wagertalk.com. And I will break down every single game on the board, except like always, the Monday night game. Let's start right off the bat. Thursday night, Tampa Bay going into Atlanta. Tampa Bay right now is plus one and a half. The line in this game, the total 43 and a half points. Now Atlanta's offense just can't really get going. Yes, sure. They had 26 points against a good Saints uh, D unit last week, but that was phony. They scored on defense and special teams, and the Falcons won this game without putting up a single touchdown offensively. Yes, you heard that right. They didn't score one touchdown offensively, and they needed a 58-yard field goal to get that W. The Falcons, well, they're in the bottom half of the league in yards gained, in rushing yards, in passing yards, and in points scored. Defensively, their stat line is the same. As the cool kids say, their D is mid, mid at best, and the numbers back it up. One thing interesting uh, that I need to point out, especially considering I am leaning towards the under, is this Atlanta defense has played outstanding when their opponents are in the red zone. They're a bend-don't-break kind of defense. That's why their yards, uh, yards allowed is so big, but they are containing teams to field goals uh, for, the, for the most part. So take that into account. So I came into the season with a very, very high on this Falcons team. And for the record, I was very low on this Bucks team. But I think I was wrong on both accounts. This Bucks team has beaten Philly, the Lions in Detroit, and Washington, who is now 3-1 and one on the year. They are playing great offensively, and their D unit has finally come together. Now, I understand that they really were not getting much pressure on the quarterback for the first three games, but what we saw in Philadelphia was a different game. This Bucks team had six sacks at home against the Philadelphia Eagles, and if I'm a Falcons fan, that would worry me. The Falcons' O-line is a disaster, and Captain Kirk is really struggling with pressure right now. There is just no other way to bet this game but to take the points here, and frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a 2020 overtime game. This is a crucial game for both teams. I lean on the under, but I am worried about some big plays getting in the way. Take Tampa Bay plus one and a half against Atlanta. Now, before we get into the Sunday games, and we'll start in London with the New York Jets against Minnesota, I want to give out a promo for you all. Uh, guys, in all seriousness, I started the NFL season uh, rough. First two weeks did not go well. I have now made money for my clients two weeks in a row, week three and week four. And with that said, I haven't heated up at all. I'm seeing it really well, but I am getting some tough losses along the way. October is going to be a massive month of NFL betting for me. I'm one of the best NFL bettors on the planet. You have an October where I'm coming in hot, but not smoking hot. And I feel like my run is about to happen. I will have a big card going this uh, weekend. My promo for you all is don't buy this weekend. Buy a month of my plays. It's literally only 99 bucks. I'm telling you, this October is going to be a monster for us. $99. Use the promo code NFL99. That's NFL99. $99 for a full month of my plays. Okay, London. Tottenham Spurs field. New York Jets plus two and a half against Minnesota. The total, 40 and a half. Now, the Jets are a bit of a mess right now. Yes, I feel they are. Their D has been outstanding, 
But outside of a couple of good plays here and there, their offense, well, they're out of sync. Last week, Rodgers was 24 for 42, 225 yards. He was sacked five times, and his run offense had 10 penalties. Even their kicker sucked, and for the record, that cost us a win. We just needed New York Jets on the money line in a teaser. Couldn't get that kick through. I also don't understand how a Rodgers-led team can only get Garrett Wilson five catches for 41 yards. Something is wrong in New York. Hall, he ran the ball 10 times for four yards. 10 times for four yards. I am convinced I can get 10 yards on 10 carries simply by falling forward with the ball. Hackett needs to go. O'Connell, on the other hand, this guy is a freaking offensive genius. Sam Donald has turned into Peyton Manning, and we saw what he did with Kirk Cousins. Here we have a game where the fourth best offense points scored is playing a bottom feeder in offense. Many is in the top half of the league in every single offensive category. The Jets, they're in the bottom half of the league. Sure, defensively, the Jets have great numbers. I could assemble a D unit from wager to cappers who could put up decent numbers against the Pats, the Titans, and the Broncos. Defensively, many had a rough second half against the Pack last game, but because but before that, literally before the last quarter of game four, they were probably the best defense in all of football. I think we have a market that is overvaluing the Rodgers brand and the D unit the Jets had last season. Look at the stats this year. Look at a 4-0 team who beat Green Bay, Houston, and San Fran against a 2-2 two two team who lost to Denver last week. You would think many should be minus 6.5. On top of that, the emotions of both teams have to be headed in the opposite direction. So long as this game stays under a field goal, we're taking the Vikings. Carolina, plus 4 against Chicago. The total was 42. There's money coming in on the over in this game. It's now 43. Good on you, Andy the Red. You've played some good ball so far this year. What Dalton has done is throw the ball deep. And what does that do? Well, if it's a reception, he gets some chunk yards. But even if it's not a reception, it pulls the defense back, opens up the slot, and finally creates some type of running game. And we saw Carolina was able to run the ball last week. Caleb for Chicago. He's coming along. After 26 first downs and 330 yards in the air against Indy two weeks ago, he went and fixed his biggest issue last week. He went 8-9 and nine for 75 yards and a touchdown against the Blitz. Caleb in this offense is getting better. We also finally see, saw Swift put up a big game. 93 yards on the ground, 72 yards in the air. We were on the Bears last week but I can't get around to laying four with them against anyone quite yet. Even last week, where they were minus two, I told you guys to take the money line. The issue in this game is Chicago struggles to score, yet the Panthers can't stop anyone. Chicago is a great D unit, yet a Dalton-led offense is putting up points. This game is scary, and I likely won't get to the window, but if I had to bet it, I would take the points. Carolina plus the four. I also lean on the over here. The Panthers are the worst in the league in pressuring the quarterback, and that is exactly what Caleb needs. Some time to see the field. Now, one of the biggest games of the week, and a massive game in this division. Baltimore minus two and a half for Cincinnati, a total that was 48 and a half and is now 51. Big money has been pouring in on the Ravens. Line moved overnight from minus one and a half to minus two and a half. Now let's break this game down. Since he has a monster offense and a complete and total disaster of a defensive unit. What does that equate to? A game with a whole lot of scoring. This is where I'm going. Even with the line move, I like over 51. The bottom line here is even after since he did nothing in their first game, they are a top 10 offensive unit, 26 points on average a game. The Ravens, 27 points scored on average a game. Both teams are coming off games where they scored in the 30s. Head-to-head, -head, the last outing was 34-20. The one before that, 
27-24. And I'm convinced that both those games, both teams had better defenses and both teams had less weapons on offense. Defensively, this Bengals team is a total nightmare. The Panthers put up 24, Washington 38, KC 26. Even the Patriots moved the ball on them. Although the Ravens' D was awesome against Josh Allen, they allowed Dallas 25, the Raiders 26, KC 27. They are not nearly as good as they were last season. I think we see a total shootout here. I think we see both teams get into the 30s. Bottom line, take the over. Note, the Ravens have allowed an NFL worst 10 completions on passes as passes that have gone over 20 yards. Take chase on the over in yards in this game. Buffalo, Houston, before we get into that, quick reminder, use the promo code NFL99. NFL99, get an entire month of all my NFL plays for only $99. Now, Buffalo, minus one. They're on the road. They're playing Houston. The total here is 46 and a half. There's been lots of money coming in on the bills. The line, uh, there's been lots of money coming in on Houston, sorry. The line moved from minus two for Buffalo to minus one. Okay, let's take this game apart. 18 points per game from the Texans so far this year. This is not what we expected. And a lot of it has to do with self-inflicted wounds. Just too many stupid penalties, especially on first downs. But I think they get that fixed as the season progresses and this offense comes to life. For the record, they are the second best passing team in the league. They just can't get out of their own way, but they will. Defensively, they had a 25% pressure rate on Fabio and the Jacksonville Jaguars, which gave Fabio a lot of time to throw the ball. This is not going to work against Josh Allen. Give Josh Allen a lot of time to throw the ball. He's going to eat you alive. As for Josh and his offense, brutal, horrible game against the Ravens. But these things happen. And trust me, folks, if they didn't fumble on the second drive in the second half, that Baltimore game and that 10-point score by Buffalo is a whole different ball game. This Buffalo team is still number two in the league in scoring, averaging 30.5 points a game. This game is in Houston. It's in nice weather with two teams that can score and score quickly. There is no other way to look at this but to take the over in this game, 46 and a half points. Now we turn our attention to Indy. They're plus three, playing Jacksonville. 46 is the total. With Richardson just announced, I mean like an hour before the show taped, the line has moved off of three to Jacksonville minus two and a half. I don't understand that, but let's move on. When your O-line is dominating Pittsburgh's defensive line, you know you might have a good football team. Everything is about the trenches, and Indy's O-line was incredible last Sunday. Couple that with the fact that Pittman finally had a big day, and Taylor, well, he was Taylor, and this team is lights out offensively. Also, I was thinking about passing in this game, but now with Richardson playing, we're going to take the over. First off, the last three meetings have gone way, way over the total. 57 points, 52 points, and 61 points. It hasn't even been close. Yes, the Jags have struggled to score, but Fabio looked way more comfortable in the pocket against Houston, and he did finally put up a couple of TDs. This Jags team, defensively, they've allowed 71 points per game on them in their last two games. And this Indy team, as I've said, they can score, and they can score quick. Indy just put up 27 points against one of the best D units in all of football, and 10 of those points were Joe freaking Flacco. This Indy team also allowed the pathetic offense of Pittsburgh to put up 24 of them, 16 from the anemic Bears, and 29 from Houston. I have to believe both these teams get into the 20s. I think we see a 27-24 type of game. Note, Jacksonville, they rank 29th in pressuring the QB, and they're playing one of the best O-lines in all of football. Richardson is going to have a ton of time to throw. Expect long bombs all day. Take the over. Miami, New England, pick them. 
36 and a half. Money's being bet on the under. No kidding. 35 and a half. And that seems quite obvious to me. We're just going to ride the paths under here. We're not going to overthink this. We're not going to overanalyze this. Frankly, we're not even going to handicap this. The Pats are two and two to the over on the year, which means way more unders are coming our way. There will be nothing more said than that. Take under the total of 35 and a half. Cleveland going into Washington. Cleveland is plus three. Total here is 43 and a half. Now, everyone is betting Washington right now. Everyone. The line has moved to, um, the line is now, Minus three and a half for Washington. And that's a fairly big move. There's obviously been some big bets placed on the Commodores. And the total, well, it's been bet up to 44 and a half. Washington is quite the offense. It's only punted once. Washington has only punted once and scored 101 points in their past three games. Holy crap. Washington ran for 170 yards against Arizona last week. This will be an issue for Cleveland who allowed the Raiders to put up twice, almost three times as many rush yards on them as they did in any other game this season. Plus, if you watch the Browns, they can't seem to tackle. They are the worst team in the league in rushing after contact, 2.7 yards after contact. All I heard about was how good this Browns D is. Hogwash, bull crap. They have held one team to under 20 points in four games, and that was the Fabio-led Jags. This bad Las Vegas Raiders offense without Adams just scored 20 on him. The horrible Danny Dimes-led Giants put up 21 on them. Please, garbage. As for their offense, if you take the worst food in the world, say Chicago pizza, and then you combine it with the second worst food in the world. Say a New York street hot dog. What do you get? The Browns offense. 16, 15, 18, 17 points in four games. Ridiculous. Pathetic. I like to look at the emotional state of teams. By the way, what I'm about to say is the highlight of my NFL presidential address in my personal opinion. So I'd like to look at the emotional state of teams. Here we have a one and three Browns team who came into the season expecting happy endings and instead left unfulfilled. As opposed to Washington, they were told there were no massage bookings that day. Then they got a call that there were cancellations and ended up with a whole lot of happy endings. One of these teams is coming to this game sky high. The other, sky low. This is honestly, there's honestly nothing good happening in Cleveland. I mean nothing. And that even includes their football team. More jokes from the Prez. You would think that it's a hor- that uh, after a horrible loss against the Giants, the Cleveland Browns would bounce back. Yeah, that's not a thing. They did not bounce back. Bottom line, and I got lots more to say here. Buy my package, and you can read the rest. Washington, minus three. The Raiders. Plus two against Denver. 37 is the total. There's a three on the board now for Denver. That means a few big bets have been placed on this Broncos team. Bonix was awful against the Jets. Like legit Chicago pizza, awful. Like Cleveland Browns, awful. Minus seven yards in passing in the first half. Guys, how is that even a thing? How do you pass the ball Minus seven yards for an entire half. For the record, that's the worst half performance since 1976. The Broncos, they went two and a half quarters of football before they converted a third down. But we must give their D a huge amount of credit. Rodgers didn't have a clue what to do, and he's over 40 years old. Denver is third in the league in yards allowed top half in rushing yards, and the fourth best pass D in football. They're also third in points allowed and legit and the legitimate only category that counts, points allowed. They're the third best team. This Denver D has allowed nine points, seven points, and 13 points in the last three games. So here we have a Denver team that is playing lights out on D and can't score. They're averaging 15 and a half points per game and holding their opponents to 14. I'm going to look to bet the under here. As for Vegas, their D is mid at best. And other than stopping Watson, allowed Carolina to put up 36, Baltimore 23, and the Chargers 22. With that said, 
Denver's not putting up any more points than they need to. This Denver team's not going to score it. A lot of points, regardless of how bad the defense on the other team is. Again, lots more to say, but I'm just going to bottom line it. Denver and Vegas under 37. Arizona, San Fran. Pass for me. Green Bay minus three and a half against the Rams. 47 is the total, and there's been money pouring in on Green Bay. The number is now three almost everywhere, and I understand that. Small things change games. Three perfect balls to Wicks dropped. Five drops altogether by Green Bay. That was literally the difference in the game against Minnesota. Plus, I freaking love that they made a comeback and showed a lot of moxie. Furthermore, without their cornerback, Alexander, they struggled in coverage all game, and he is still questionable Sunday. As for the Rams, this team is just so injured, there's nothing they could do about it. Cup might be back, he might not. It took till the fourth quarter to finally score a TD, and their red zone, the Rams' red zone at third down efficiency, it's a nightmare. Think about that pizza and that hot dog again. That's how bad. With all that said, I think we see a Green Bay team play a good game on Sunday and put four quality quarters together. Love is healthy. The team is healthy. And if you can't beat an injury-riddled Rams team by three points, you should not be considered a playoff contender. Take Green Bay minus three. New York Giants plus six against Seattle. Big move in this uh, to the over this morning. And clearly after what we saw Monday night, this makes sense. Line is now 44. Hmm, interesting game here, as I don't think the Giants are as bad as they look, and I don't think Seattle is as good as they look. The issue here is I can't play an over with the Giants team, and I can't play an under with Seattle's team, and I think the line is perfect. We're going to pass on this game for now. I'm still going to do a deeper dive later on in the week, and I might come up with something. But as of now, it's a pass. As for your Sunday night football game, my apologies, people. I am still deep, deep, deep into handicapping this game. I have a bet for my clients on this game. And if you want it, use that promo code NFL99, and you will get that in part of my one-month-long package. Thank you all for watching the NFL Presidential Address. Make sure to like this video. Make sure to comment. I will respond to almost all of them. Thank you so much, and we'll see you again for week six.